Hi, everyone. Welcome to All Things Creative, also known as Art Chats. I'm your host, Linda Riesenberg Fissler, and I'm very excited to have my two guests on today, um, James and Leanne Van Fossen. And welcome, guys. I am like so excited to talk to you because you're just Thank you. <laughs> Hi. You guys are just so creative. It's um, I, I follow James. Leanne, you and I need to friend each other on Facebook, but um, I yeah. follow James and I know a lot of what happens in your world because James is very supportive of you and, and you of James oh, naturally. So very, yeah. very, very, very sweet. Love that. And, <laughs> um, and so I do know a little bit about you and, and James, but what I also would like you to do is just tell us a little bit about each other, about you, um, each of you. Okay. Oh, I'll, I'll talk about you and she can talk about <laughs> hey, hey, that works for me, whichever works for you. <laughs> Now you go. First. You want me to go first? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I am an artist and an author, and I'm also an art teacher at a high school. Oh, cool. Um, so it's kind of nonstop around the clock for me. And I've been painting, oil painting, since I was 12, and have had little breaks here and there, but um, and really fully into my art production, I would say, right now more than ever. Oh, cool. And uh, we have a beautiful daughter, an eight-year-old. Her name's Sophia. Okay, now that I didn't know about you. <laughs> <laughs> She's not in the room with us, but she exists. <laughs> okay, okay, great. Well, congratulations on that, too. I mean, that's that, I mean, that was like a, a big surprise because I never see pictures out on Facebook. So maybe on your page, yeah. Leanne, because... She's the one that, yeah. I'm more the... More. I don't post more <laughs> yeah. that. Uh, so. Okay, <laughs> so go ahead, James. How about you? Okay, uh, so from a creative standpoint, um, I was in the music when I was uh, 13 is when I started playing. Uh, I've been drawing my whole life, uh, but I started oil painting when I was 37 about. And that's, I studied under Duffy Sheridan for a small amount of time, but that was enough to, to really uh, inspire me to to really go into full time painting, and so I did it for ten years, uh, and now I've got a little side job, just to help with the bills. <laughs> oh, okay, well, I understand that one too. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so let's. Um, I'm going to jump in. The first thing I want to do is show this next painting, and um, this was by James, and. Um, <laughs> It's really interesting. I want you to tell us about this, but I also want to make mention that Roger Scruton, who I actually interviewed out at mm -hmm. Track um, back, I think it was like, oh gosh, 2014 maybe. Um, yeah. And I know that he actually commented on this painting, and that that uh, that's amazing. I mean, Roger is yeah. a very <laughs> Roger. No, I, Roger huh? I was gonna say Roger is a very sweet guy. I mean, he actually came on live when I was out there. Um, podcasting right. from from track and the reason why you know at that time the the track conference was about why beauty matters so to have someone right. of Roger's stature make a comment on a painting I bet you were like walking on air <laughs> so. yeah gosh I couldn't believe it. I mean I love listening to him talk I I tell Leanne I wish I was that smart all the time. <laughs> I'm not even close but I think I I, I agree with so much what he says so, and we actually invited him to uh, the opening for this painting in Manhattan, mm. and he responded back with with the words. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm just glad he responded. And then he said had such nice words to say about the painting. Right. So yeah. you, you have to share what he said, because now people oh, are there going. I, <laughs> I'm trying to remember exactly what it was. because I, I can look at it. Can I look at the email? Sure. Yeah, right, you, won't, you won't disturb what's up. So because I have it, I have it up on my emails all the time. Like, yeah, <laughs> like see here, I'm co I'm in conversation with Roger Scruton all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's okay. Here's what he said, dear Mr. Van Fossen, thank you for the email, for your very kind remarks, and for the interesting image of your incredibly ambitious painting. Alas, I won't be able to make your show, but I wish you all the best with it, since it certainly deserves critical praise. Well done. Yeah. yeah. So that sent me on the to the moon. So. Cool. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and you can always tell he's British because alas, you know, we don't walk. Alas. Around, yeah. <laughs> we don't walk around in America going alas. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, what, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so what inspired you to do this painting? Uh you know, I, I guess most of all, the visual inspiration was Mike, Michelangelo. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, I wanted to push myself to see how far I can take the figure. And I, I'd only done one multi-figure painting before this, mm -hmm. and it was very successful. And so I what I wanted to uh, push myself and see how many figures I can fit together in an eight and a half by six and a half foot painting, <laughs> and make it and make it readable, make it clear. Uh, the narrative, yeah, I wanted to sh hopefully if people spend time looking at it, they would figure out some kind of narrative with it. And I know it's very confusing and challenging to a lot of people, but it was to me too. And uh, it, uh, I think it was a success after three years of painting it. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Full time. Wow. Um, and again, it, it was it was kind of with my contemporaries, it, um, it was kind of uh, looked at, you know, some loved it, maybe some didn't. I didn't hear much about it, but it was shared on a big uh, Facebook site that had like four or six million followers. And I, they, I started getting all these comments and friend requests. And I read there was like three or four thousand comments on the painting, and they were all just so positive and cool. And that's that's just regular people looking at it and commenting that, and that's kind of what I liked, you know, just the, yeah, that's that's wonderful. And I mean, three years worth of effort yeah. to be rewarded with that is, you know, well deserved. So yeah, um, yeah. thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I'm looking around the picture. Leanne, are you in here? Is that you? <laughs> yeah. Is that you in the? Well, book? yeah. He's <laughs> I mean, I'm in the blue, that's right. and that's our little girl when she was, gosh, I guess five years ago um, that I'm holding on to. And then, you know, he was very uh, Da Vinci-esque. He would cut off certain people's heads and put other people's <laughs> heads on for the aesthetic goal. So I'm I'm in different <laughs> places <laughs> throughout. And we did have some friends model, yeah. um, and James himself modeled for a, a lot of the male figures. Yeah, about ninety percent of the male. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. I like that. So now, now I have to um, do. You, I'm like stumbling over my words here because I have like four questions <laughs> in my head. But um, <laughs> do you want to talk a little bit about your process, James, or or do how about we go on to one of Leanne's paintings? Let her talk a little bit about that. And then yeah, um, whatever you want, yeah. Yeah, let's do that, and then you both can kind of chime in about maybe how your your um, sure. painting processes are the same or and how they differ. Mm -hmm. Because your styles, <laughs> I don't know if there's any similarity. There's not. Yeah, I was like, the paintings are so different. I mean, I would put James more in a classical realism mode based yeah. on that first painting, and and Leanne, you are all about wonderfully strong shapes and color. So, you know, impressionistic, uh, I would put yeah. you in that that mode, um, which is cool because that's what I am. I put myself in that oh, mode as well. So, um, yeah, so tell us, you know, how 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 you came, being an art teacher, first yes. of all, you know, you really are going to always push your boundaries because you have to push your students' boundaries. And right. Yeah, so this is, I mean, I love the simplicity of this, and yet it is so strong, so... Thank you. Mm -hmm. And this is actually a miniature painting. It's, I think, only six inches. Um, but I had a lot of fun with it. I have done a huge series of harbor and boat scenes. Um, I'm born and raised in the mountains in Colorado, and <laughs> there I continue to live. But I guess my soul <laughs> lives in the sea because <laughs> that's what I love to paint. But um, yeah, I am a very fast painter, I guess, especially compared to James. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just finished talking about how he spent three years on that painting, and I've never spent three days on a painting. Um, I have kind of a short attention span, and I have a daughter and, mm. a, you know, other things. So when I commit to a painting, I kind of commit that session to finishing the painting as well as starting it. Okay. And I love that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a goal for you, sounds like, James. I'm going to finish a painting. And, <laughs> I'm to work up to and, um, and you said it right. You're an impressionist, so you know I'm obsessed with light and color. So mm -hmm. that's really where my 
my heart goes in every mm. piece. They, they, someone said it's harder to write a poem than a, than a novel sometimes because you have to condense the right things down, you know, before you even start. And I think that's why I like her paintings. They're like poems. Mine are more like no. <laughs> epic, <laughs> epic <laughs> novels, trilogies, or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, this is this is really great. But so, is this a uh, brush or palette knife? Both? Oh, good question. I do use a lot of palette knife. I always start my paintings with brush. I like to brush on the foundations and kind of outline the the vision with brush. But I tend to to conclude with uh, the palette um, for added texture and definition and um, just some final touches of light and color. So, yeah, that's wonderful. And, and James, mostly brush. Uh, yeah, I start with uh, vine charcoal and and hit it right with the brush right away, and and stick there. I mean, I've I've experimented with palette knife, but um, um, I'm trying to stay focused with the brush. <laughs> and, and, and you know, that's there's nothing wrong with either one, which is what I yeah. tell. I, I teach in an art center as well, and um, they watch me paint with palette knife, and they're constantly. I have a lot of beginners in my class, so um, you, as as Leanne just posed, you know, talked about you, you have to start with your basic foundations. You have to learn, yeah. you know, some before you break all the rules, you got to learn the rules. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so. Um, the two <laughs> yeah you know, so it's really kind of interesting because and the other part which we can get into a little bit of a conversation too about imagination um but mm -hmm. it was really kind of because it's like i have this painting in my mind it's like great i can't help you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> it's, but i can help you get the foundations and i can help you build the skills and and keep that painting in your mind okay. because you aren't going to get there now so you know, like right. everybody wants to say something they have to learn the language to communicate it first and then they can speak their soul with it or yeah. their vision yeah yeah absolutely so um anything anything else that you want to that you can think about that you want to talk about your your process of painting because we're, we're very different james yeah. is very um uh, methodical and has you know a lot of thought and sleepless nights put into his paintings whereas i'm i'm extremely impulsive i do not plan at all and i rarely even sketch out <laughs> the paintings <laughs> before i go that just shows how different we are which is hilarious but it works for us so in I our respective ways <laughs> so impulsive well, that you know, that's I don't think that's unusual for someone who is more classical realism. I mean, there's mm -hmm. always been a struggle when you when you paint in a classical form to mm -hmm. you know, break those rules that are so exactly there. And then, and that's uh, one. And to tell you the truth, that's one of the reasons why I went from brush to palette knife because I couldn't break mm -hmm. it when I had a brush right. in my hand. Exactly. That is a perfect example. And yeah. I actually did a series of portraits with palette knives. I think the Art Renewal Center has a video up of me painting with a palette knife. Mm -hmm. Which is so, funny because we funny. did it for about a month of yeah. his entire career and then never did it, never again. Did it again. But it did well, it, it. It broke through the something. I was like dreaming of painting with a palette knife and I actually did it. And But now, yeah, it, it helped. And it's really interesting too is because there's this, there's this this thing of fear behind it. It's like, hmm. at least I see it in my students. I have one student mm -hmm. who did a lot of pastel work, so her drawing skills are wonderful. And mm -hmm. you know, she kept saying to me, I wanna get looser. And then I watch her paint and she'd be sitting there with a brush like a pastel and combining, you know, or, or as mm -hmm. we call it in the class, mushing all these colors together so there wasn't a hard edge. And, you know, <laughs> that was like, okay, you know, let me talk to you about edges, Joanne, you know, or Joan, this, do this, you know? And she just mm -hmm. kind of looks at me strangely. And then finally I looked at her and I said, okay, I want you to paint a painting and palette knife. I said, you could, yeah. put, you could put the value pattern, the value study on first, but when that value study is done, you're putting color on with palette knife. And she did it and she broke through and she sat there and looked at me like, why have I been beating my head against the wall? <laughs> and, now, and now she's like, I'm painting the value study with a palette knife. And I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> hold on, hold on. 
hold on. <laughs> it's like you're gonna have globs of pain everywhere. No, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So I mean, it is. I, I really do think there is this. There's something that holds you back, and I don't. I always attribute it to some kind mm. of fear or something. It's like. If when, as long as you have this, I know how to paint with a brush. If I pick something else up, yeah. you know, I, can't, I, I don't know how to paint with that. So, but it, and, yeah, and a good way of breaking it is to really realize you could paint with a rock. If you really just anything that picks up the paint and puts it on, you know, the canvas, if, if, if you might have to, you know, use different thoughts of doing it, but you can really paint with anything, a basketball, a rock, a toothbrush, anything. Do you know? Yeah, it's really, it's funny. My students, you know, if they're beginners to advance, they still all have these expectations of perfection in yeah. their heads, whereas they're scared to draw a line, paint a line, because it may not be perfect. And mm. and I'm like, that is so against the nature yeah. of what we're doing. We need, you have to expect it not to yeah, be it's perfect. it's always never perfect. And you have to, it's more about how it feels and what you learn through application of technique. Yeah, and adjusting. After it's on there, you just yeah. start adjusting. Yeah. Yeah. It's and the other thing that I, I find, and I don't know if, if you see it or even if you have some, you probably did when you first started. I doubt you do now, but it's one of these things where it's um, the painting is too precious. I don't want to ruin. Oh, I, I like that brush stroke I put down. I'm never going to touch it again. That's exactly <laughs> yeah. right. No, we exactly still have, right. we still have that. I, I would say I still. I still, well, my paintings go so quickly, but I get attached to certain parts. Yeah, that yeah. is, and I re, I remember that so much when I was first starting, yeah. And that's why, like Duffy Sheridan said, you like paint, you know, 10 paintings, and then goes, and then wipe them off and start them. And when you're <laughs> new, you're like, no! <laughs> I'm wiping off my heart. <laughs> But it's the only way to really, yeah, to break through is to get over that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's really kind of funny because, um, Leanne, you probably deal with this when you're teaching as well. Um, but it's really funny because I'll put my value study on and, and my students will be standing there and they'll go, oh, I love that because I paint with them so that they can watch me. And then, you know, I take breaks mm -hmm. and, and go and talk to them. It's a two hour class. So it's, it's, you know, oh, nice. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they're there to paint just as much as I'm there to teach. But if I do a constant teach for two hours, then they never get any application, you right. know, in doing it. So I do it individually and then in between. Mm -hmm. So I'm not standing over their shoulder and they feel like I'm staring at them. I, I end mm -hmm. up painting a little right. bit, which is, which then they can watch me, you know, if they have mm -hmm. some questions that they can't formulate. So it's really kind of interesting because mm -hmm. I'll put my value study on so that they, they watch me do that. And then while mm -hmm. I'm putting on color, I'll go, oh, you know, I really don't like that. And I'll just like scrape it off. And in the end is nothing like the value study. And they'll sit there and go, why did you do that? You know? And I'm like, it's just a process. Yeah. And I, I sit there and I go, why does this look worse? And they're like, no, but I like the other one too. Why didn't you just paint it again? And I'm like, oh, I'm not into painting it again. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, me either. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, not like Monet where I do 150 haystacks. That ain't me. <laughs> so, <laughs> one haystack, that's all there is. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole world out there. <laughs> that's right. So, so but yeah, I don't know. Do you see any of that in your students as well? It's just, just kind of like the. Yeah, I mean, if, I, can't, I just am trying to get them to break through the, the mentality of having to be perfect and I don't know if it's their age you know I work with mainly 16 to 18 year olds um, when I teach workshops with adults um, there will be some of that reservation at the beginning the fear of the palette knife mm -hmm. the awe in which I eliminate and add and eliminate and add um, but then the adults I find are a little bit more willing to be courageous mm -hmm. with the process um, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, it um, yeah, it is. I, I I'm trying to think of like some other instances where some other stuff has come up, but I do have um one student, James, and mm -hmm. you prob you'll probably um uh, identify with them. He was talking with someone who studied under Daniel Graves, and I mm -hmm. I'm sure you know who Daniel Graves is, Florence uh, yeah. Atelier, and uh, anyway, so Florence Academy, I think it is, but anyway, um. Mm -hmm. He, this gentleman was in uh, Dayton where one of my students live and 
he went to talk with them and all this. So he comes into my class and he looks at me and he says, I think I'm going to Florence. And I will, good for you. What are you going to do there? You know, I'm thinking vacation, right? He's like, no, I think I'm going to go study with Daniel Graves. And I'm like, do you know Daniel Graves? <laughs> and he's like, no. And I'm like, do you mean at his academy? And he goes, yeah. And I said, oh, okay. So that kind of cleared that one up. But it was really yeah. kind of interesting because he he wants, he's like, you know, I want to go study in an atelier, but I don't want to paint, paint in classical realism. And I I just kind of mm. look at him and go, then I don't think you should go to that academy. <laughs> but, yeah. Right. <laughs> you would feel that in you. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. So did he go? <laughs> no, no. He's, no, he didn't. He's actually... Um, He's actually down in Florida right now, but um, it, it's really just kind of interesting. He's still thinking about going there. So it's a really interesting mm -hmm. conversation because I met Daniel Graves at track and, and uh -huh. had a couple conversations with him. Wonderful man and would be lovely to study under. But as yeah. I told him, I said, you have to be willing to like draw hands for five weeks. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. It's yeah. funny because I lived and studied in Florence um, my junior year of college. I lived there for a year and so was surrounded by, um, you know, the Renaissance mm -hmm. and the Uffizi and all oh, the best of the best and traveled to Paris and went to the Louvre. Uh, and it had to have resonated somewhere in my practice, even though I'm a contemporary oppressionist. Mm -hmm. But maybe those subtle attentions to light and um, just mm -hmm. compositions and color, use of color somewhere subconsciously had to sink in with me, even though my style is so completely different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's, I mean, I keep wondering in a closet somewhere if um, maybe James doesn't have a couple attempts of at impressionism. <laughs> And then oh. Leanne, and Leanne, conversely yeah. to you, you have these, you know, hidden in the closet classical realism paintings that we'll never see or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, you do from high school. <laughs> well, James, so you're, you're spot on with James, and he's he's out of the closet with his series. He's actually... Uh, oh, the tell. Yeah, tell her, <laughs> tell her about your series. Uh, well, that's not, that's not me. That's Leanne's, but, uh, yeah, the, uh, I'm just, I'm doing, uh, paintings is based on dec decorating. I've been working with decorators and what people just love to hang on their walls because, you know, so many times, uh, you, you put so much hours in a painting and people don't even want to hang it on their wall. And so, <laughs> <laughs> but my, my point is, I wasn't going to talk about Jaffa, but he's, he's like my, what is he, alter, alter ego. ego. <laughs> and I, I, I do, I put a cigarette in my mouth and paint like Pollock. I just start throwing <laughs> paint on and move it around. And, and they sell. And they, they're selling. They <laughs> and, and it's, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> secret sell. No, no, but it's a release. It's yeah. like this mental, emotional release, you know, from the tight, yeah. rigidity. Right. Yeah, oh, it's so fun. I finish does. them faster than Leanne finishes hers. Oh, and they're huge. Is that a challenge? Yeah, it's a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it, it's fun. And uh, it, it's, I, I don't know. That's all I got to say about it. <laughs> oh, so, so he didn't want to tell anyone, but it's, it's going to come out because he's doing more and more. And yeah. they're just fun, abstract expressionist pieces. And they're big and yeah. bold and just fun. So, so art does have to go with the couch. Is that this new saying now? <laughs> oh gosh, we hate that. No, I mean <laughs> integrity. Integrity yeah. wise, no. <laughs> well, we've gone over and over on this. You know, a painting can be so much more than just decoration. And yeah. then you look at the last. That's been an argument for so long. It has. Know, is it decoration or is it? It's know. up to the person buying it. You know, what is their purpose? what is their connection with the painting? Is it because it complements their interior design? And that's <laughs> fine if it's mm -hmm. aesthetically beautiful in that way, you know, that's fine. And then, but it, or, or do they collect art because they connect with the art piece itself aside from everything mm -hmm. else? Yeah. 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 Or, or you can come to my house where I have early marriage furniture. I have like, nothing matches anything so it doesn't matter 
what's on your wall. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. it's comfortable. I love it. It's me. So. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. yeah. That's good. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to go on to some okay. other stuff. Um, <laughs> you guys are cracking me up. I love this. <laughs> so <laughs> what? you both have, no, it's just the, the way you banter with each other. And I mean, there's some competition there. I can kind of hear it, but there's yeah. not, I mean, it's not in a bad way. It's, it's fun competition. Yeah. You can laugh at one another. I, 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 that's what's cracking me up. It's like, okay. Because <laughs> so, I've seen, I've seen it way on the other side where it's not like that too. So. Oh, oh, I know. I've talked to, we've talked to a few artists like that too. And I yeah. hate that. Yeah. Gosh. We're, we're so not competitive. We're, I mean, and only the fun way that you've heard. We're, we're too different. You know, what's there to compete about? We're, we're so different. Yeah, and like I and I can tell just the Facebook posts, you are so supportive of each other, and and, oh, I, and yeah. I really really appreciate those posts when they when they come up. It's really nice. So I mean, she started it with me. I mean, she <laughs> she sold she sold my artwork in a gallery before she met me, so she was supporting me before she knew me. Yeah, that's how we met. I oh. sold his art. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So was was that in Colorado? Is that where you live it now? It was actually in Scottsdale. Um, I, I had moved down there after college and, you know, my degree was in art and I had lived in Italy and I didn't really know what to do. So I started working in art galleries and uh, that's where it all happened. I started <laughs> selling his art before I even knew him. <laughs> oh, cool. Great and she girl. did it for a long time. And then after how many years we were together, I finally convinced her to start painting again and I was just blown away how she, her ability to paint in, in this style like you're looking at mm -hmm. um and I, I just started supporting her it became more important you know even than my art at that time no. I think well after I finished that big <laughs> painting and I wasn't <laughs> I was gonna support anything but me I was so done with me and painting I mean you can get too much into your into your own head and in your own career and your own painting your own style it's it's actually not that good for you so yeah cool so that like takes <laughs> right into our other projects that you guys do you cuz be you both paint but you both kind of like diverge uh, yeah. the painting part because James I think you have music projects that are going on that I want you to tell us about and Leanne you um, just published a book which I'm a writer also so we'll we'll talk a little bit about that so but first um, James tell us about what what's this music thing you got going on <laughs> what is that music well thing? the music thing uh, <laughs> it first started I was making uh, every time I would do a, a major painting the, the last the last uh, like eight years, like the first eight years of my art painting career, I would write a song to go with the painting and make a, a music video where I would show the painting and show maybe me working on it and play the song that goes with the painting. And I did a lot of videos like that and it, it was it was kind of fun. Uh, but I started, I live, we live in Eagle, Colorado and there's a lot of bluegrass and folk music around. So right now I'm, I, I'm in a trio and I play mandolin or harmonica and we have a great singer and uh, another guy uh, sings. Well, we have a female singer and a guy who plays acoustic guitar, but we're really doing good around here. We have a radio interview. Yeah, they're the amazing. Yeah. They sound amazing. And so that's what I'm excited about musically right now. Cool. And Leanne, <laughs> you are, no, I, I didn't mean to make that sound that badly. Guys, I heard you chuckle after I said cool. <laughs> but um, <laughs> he, we're, No, we're chuckling because he exhaled for the first time in like seven <laughs> minutes. <laughs> she always looks at me. She gets so nervous and looks at me when I'm talking because she, she doesn't have faith in my talking. <laughs> she has more faith than I do in my ability to speak orally, but I, I get through it. You're doing, you're doing great. Hang in there, James. <laughs> so. Hang in there, James. We're here for you. <laughs> yeah. So, but um, now I have a friend. It was really kind of interesting. Um, he played backup guitar for Manhattan Transfer, and I got in contact oh, right. with. Yeah, his name's Wayne Johnson. Really, really cool guy. Mm -hmm. um, but I contacted him when I was working with Kevin McPherson. Um, Kevin had a 365 paintings a day 
um, the, mm. a pond outside his home for each day of the year. And um, mm. we were putting together an exhibit for this. And I contacted Wayne and said, hey, you want to put some music together to that? And he did. Um, <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. So it, was, it was pretty cool. And I'll, I'll send you some of the, I don't think it's been released. So um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, I'd love to see that. I'll, I'll send you something on the side. So <laughs> <laughs> Wayne, if you're listening, don't don't turn turn your ears off. <laughs> we will not we will not reproduce ourselves. Well, <laughs> he's got the, he's got the copyrights on it, I'm sure. So, but yeah, I, I'll I'll see if I can uh, find them on my my computer. Yeah, but cool. I, I that whole idea. yeah, it it was really really cool. And then I had him on the show, and he talked about you know what the painting invoked in him and why mm. he used such. Um, I'll send you the link to that too, because it'd probably be fun for you to listen yeah, to Wayne talk about that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. So that it was really when you said that you were doing that with your painting, um, you know, yeah. putting music with your painting. My mind went immediately to Wayne doing this <laughs> for me, and it was just like, it, yeah. it was, it was really, it's really interesting the way that music and art almost go hand in hand. Whereas, oh yeah, yeah. It, whereas Leanne writing in <laughs> art. <laughs> just does not go hand in hand at all. I mean, it's, it almost feels like it's two different sides of your brain working in some It places. is. Yeah. I mean, now that I've gotten through, survived the novel um, <laughs> thing, uh, painting feels very easy and, uh, and fun and <laughs> effortless <Right>. to me. <laughs> But it, it is, I mean, in some ways it is the same. You still come back to, and I can talk about this with you because I've written four novels and oh, uh, I'm on my crazy. fifth. <laughs> oh, don't make it wow. sound like it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still recovering. <laughs> She's on her second one right now. I'm, I'm almost done with my second one, but oh man, Linda, I'm struggling. <laughs> Oh, well, I, let's talk about the process a little bit. Maybe we can help. So maybe I can yeah, help. Through, talk me through this. No. <laughs> so, so we, well, I never, um, I never had any ambitions to be a writer ever. Um, I've always been well read. I've always loved reading. Um, our daughter is an incredible reader too. Oh, yeah. There's something in the bloodline, but. Um, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, uh, I love, love, love reading. And, and uh, you know, I have some of my favorite authors. And um, uh, we were, well, Jane, I've, I've told stories to our daughter. And I get really mm -hmm. elaborate and storytelling. We have a little game we play where we spend. We take turns and say, okay, a tell a story. You got, you know, however long it takes, just yeah. start, start talking telling a story and it's, it's great for your mind yeah I, and it's I, a challenge and it's fun and so james started telling me you got to write a book because <laughs> of my my award-winning stories within our family won that game, yeah. and uh <laughs> so we were sitting on nantucket we were in nantucket because of nancy thayer one of my favorite authors writes all these books about nantucket <laughs> and uh she made it so romantic and wonderful to me that we spent thousands of dollars to go to Nantucket and vacation there. Um, so that just shows the impact of a good yeah. <laughs> book, yeah. a good writer. Yeah. Exactly. But we were sitting there in front of our little rose covered cottage and mm. I uh, I got the idea for my book. And one, yeah. I just, I didn't hold myself to any standard or expectation. It was nothing I had ever done before and I had no deadlines. Mm. So I just, really pursued it for me and for the story I had in my head. So um, there's the book. It. There's the book, Painting Blue Water. It wasn't the naked guy. That wasn't the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I thought it, yeah. since you were getting more into the book, I thought I better go to the book before, before <laughs> she wrote about Atlas or something. So <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not that deep. No, I mean, I'm not like at all. <laughs> so I'm assuming, is this a photograph that, that's the cover that you used? Um, this yep, that's one of my original photographs, Great. and it's a place that I will not disclose because I love it. Yeah, um, okay. Very <laughs> good, and I'm self, I'm selfish, and I don't want to share it. Um, but some people know where it is. You know, if you've yeah. been there, you know where it is. Yeah. Um, 
it served as the setting, the main setting. It also takes place in Manhattan, um, a place I've spent a lot of time in as well and have always loved. And uh, there is a lot of art in this book. I mean, it's a it's a fiction, it's women's fiction, um, but the protagonist is an artist. So mm -hmm. there is a lot of art reflection yeah. in the book. Oh, cool. So um, women's fiction, is it um, more mystery? Is there a, a, a little bit about the plot? No, no mystery, some romance, some romantic comedy. Yeah. Um, you know, I like to say, you know, Kate Hudson movies, that's kind of oh, the vein, okay. the vein of the book. I like light, positive reads that have a little bit of the drama in them. Um, but more escape. Yeah. The, it's, yeah. I like to escape. That's a good word for it. Yeah. I want, and that's what a lot of the reviewers said about it is that you could just escape right into it, which mm -hmm. was um, really fulfilling. Well, so okay, so so far we. Um, we already covered two points in the process that uh, of writing and one was never write about anything you haven't experienced and or um you know haven't been right. so don't don't write about somewhere where you haven't been which i already right broke. right i already broke that rule with about three of my novels <laughs> well well that's again with good. the breaking the rules it's like yeah. i you have to and and also if you make up a fictional place who's to say what's right or wrong about it right so. and that's that's my fantasy novel that that is i'm starting to get back to work on that and that is you know just trying to make up names is names of right. places and names of characters it's like okay let's just throw some alphabets in the air and see you have to look but yeah so that was kind of um so it's, it's the mystery espionage political intrigue novel that that i have four novels out there on um, it uh, is is basically it's a series and um, that one is kind of I, I love the characters I will never leave the characters um, I'll probably always be writing on this series until you know they're they're 92 and dead or something <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but it's also you know the the fantasy writing is now a, a challenge because I am creating mm -hmm. What got me back into my writing was I started reading the original books of J.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. Okay, not not the books that um, came out when the movies came out. I'm talking about the original small little books. There's seven of them, full yeah. of poetry and, and everything. And and I sat there and thought, wow, the way that he created this world and the way that so he did. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I and I just kind of sat back and went. Okay, you're an artist. You should be able to create a world. Let's sure, do yeah. it. You know, so yeah, that's been more challenging than I thought. So it's not well. Not that's that exciting though, because I've even talked about. Oh, it would be so fun to write a post-apocalyptic, <laughs> you know, something because you can completely decide what what everything that's, looks like. And that's my big painting. Like... That's basically what I did with my big painting. I, yeah, it was my yeah. world. And I just, I, nothing was wrong. I could do whatever I wanted in it, make whatever yeah. I wanted to say. So if we look at the, the painting process, and we, we start off with the value study, then we throw some color on it, then we do some rearranging, you know. So <laughs> we've got three basic points that we all go through, creating mm -hmm. a foundation, the creating the middle, middle section of the painting, and then creating the end of it. Mm -hmm. Writing a book, Leanne, isn't that much different. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got your plot yeah, points and I mean, you got your climax and then you've got your midpoint where you throw in another maybe little plot twist, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I was very beginning to end. I know some authors jump around, um, you know, they know the ending first and then they mm. build up to it or or they write out like an outline, uh, which I do a little bit, but I really just knew where I wanted to start and then I started. <laughs> and then yeah. and then I built from there. Mm. Um and then the the farther I got into it, the more I could see where it was going to go. Yeah. But just like a painting, you sure. you know, lay down those layers and you build on the on the layers. Yeah. So let's jump back to music, James. It's kind of yeah. the same the music, right? So you have a beginning piece, you have the middle section, a bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like if you're writing a song. 
you know, then you need more of the outline. But what her book was like, almost like a solo, she just started with it mm -hmm. and started, you know, reading what she was writing and building on it and then putting an end to it without thinking about it too much. Uh, and but with music, but with music, <laughs> well, I, if, with music, I would uh, probably say you come up with a nice little riff and go, Oh, what can I do with this? Right? Yeah. As a solo, it's like jazz that when you're doing a solo, it's just, you have, you can do whatever you want. If you make a mistake, instead of trying, you, you can't go back and fix it. You just try to build on the mistake in a way that it's not a mistake. Right. And so, uh, I, I think she was unique in writing this book in that in that way. She was she didn't follow the rules usually that authors use, and I think song a good song is usually written that way too. There's not much thought involved; it just comes out. It's like it almost dictates itself where where it's Oops. supposed to go. Sorry about that. I was sorry. <laughs> I was are. trying to get to a, a another picture. So. <laughs> Sorry, no. <laughs> it's like all of a sudden it just decided that was the end. We're gonna, you know, but it's not. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I, it, it is. I think from time to time, and and like you said, sometimes you just have to get your head out of the way and and just let creation happen. But if you yeah. start to really compare processes between or processes, however you want to pronounce it, yeah. um, between all of the different arts that are out there, there is this common foundation yeah. that kind of goes through it. I mean, we can't just, if we all could just pull things out of our imagination without some kind of skill and without some kind of foundation, you know, I don't know what everything would look like, but um, mm -hmm. I, don't even, I don't even know if that would be possible unless you're telepathic because. Yeah, <laughs> right? exactly. Yeah. Um, I talk with George Gallo a lot about that because he's a musician too. Mm -hmm. And he, he paints very and a painter. Yeah. And a painter. You, do you know of George Gallo? Uh, yeah, good friend. <laughs> so. <Okay. laughs> yeah, that's probably why we're connected. <laughs> yeah, that's probably why we were connected on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's funny. There, you can, in movie making, he talks about you know his movies and, and as like a painting. And then we, t I talk. I'm more into music, so I talk the paintings more into music. But he's a musician too. Mm -hmm. and, but there is, there's great in in very deep ties to all that um, um, and it's better well the one th cool thing about it is to understand your medium to know what try not to do try not to make a movie with your painting which is not exactly what I did with the big one but uh, <laughs> know what 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 does it what can a painting do what can a, a song do and, and know your limits to that and then work within those limits and instead of that way you don't be you won't frustrate yourself if you know all those mediums. Yeah. I'm not sure how important that is to everyone. <laughs> no, I, no, I think it is. I, I mean, to, to build on that, I had a I had a conversation with George on the phone when he was um, in Savannah and filming uh, the current movie that he's working on, The Poison Rose. Right. And yeah. it, it, it was interesting because I said, well, so how's it going? And um, he's like, oh, you know, it's, it's going really well. And I, and he was on talking about it. And he says, you know, he goes, now that I'm talking to you and you always ask me about process, which I do, <laughs> he comes back and he says, he says, now that I'm thinking about this is like painting a painting. He goes, well, not <laughs> point, but he just goes into, you know, I got like a, you know, he had some time because they were on location, thank God. But he was, he was just kind of talking about, you know, for like the next 15 minutes of so where he was in this painting that of a movie <laughs> yeah. that he was making. And it was really an interesting conversation, of course, probably just interesting to all of us who are creative types. Everybody else is probably yeah. like falling asleep at this point. But it was, you know, <laughs> but it was really interesting to hear him compare where he was in the process without giving a lot away because, you know, he. He, he wasn't at the liberty to do that, but he just, yeah. you know, just the, the, comp, the, the, I'm at this point in the painting where, you know, yeah. all of the colors right. have, all the colors have come in and they've kind of shot their <laughs> own little, you know, and now I'm going to have to take all of this when I get back and, and make this wonderful painting out of it, you know, by yeah. taking, and taking, and I think that's why he loves painting so much because when he's making a movie, there's all these other people holding his brush, you know? Exactly. Yeah. So it's really is kind of interesting talking to him when he has his different hats on, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and again, when he picks up that guitar, it's zone out time. I mean, he's just, yeah, yeah he just, and it's, it's really, really wonderful. Um, yeah. such a creative person. And I know he's such an inspiration creatively. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. His, and he's 
Oot. Yeah. Plus, he doesn't take himself <laughs> seriously, which yeah. I love about him. First yeah. thing he does is bust me, then I bust him, and then. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's um yeah, it's been it's been a lot of fun working with him and talking with him. Um I had a couple art chats with him on here. Um and it's they're one of the most popular ones because he yeah. is so funny to talk to yeah. and you know and so much fun and I'd ask him a really serious question and he'd just sit there and go, "Where did that come from?" <laughs> and then yeah. all the art chat is like, "Okay, I didn't have editing software then. I couldn't edit it out." So <laughs> Thanks, George. Oh, yeah, that's a yeah, risk with George. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it was funny. You know, he we yeah. laugh we laugh a lot. Like I'm that's sure you guys do so too. Funny. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So um, I wanted to talk. We only got about uh, ten more minutes. You guys have been wonderful to talk with. But I, I um, you know, go on. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about though is because you got two really creative people living together with a child. <laughs> <laughs> Leanne, you mentioned you teach and uh, yeah. uh, teach art. I'm assuming. I think you yes. a teacher. Yeah. And um and then and James is working a little bit on the side too, and he has his music and all this. So when you guys like walk into whatever room is your studio in the house, your creative area in the house, what do you do? Hang up a do not disturb sign? I mean, <laughs> well, that's a funny question because we live in this gorgeous um loft condo with tons of natural light and and mm -hmm. high ceilings we just lucked out so when you say the space that we created <laughs> you're you're speaking to our living room and dining room and kitchen i'm not even kidding oh, yeah, it. um it's the best light in the house it's hard floors it's wide open mm. so there is no privacy no. <laughs> i i used the first eight years of my painting career, I painted like Duffy, well, he painted in the living room too, but I had a little space provided with the perfect light and I did everything exactly right. Uh, but then after, and I painted drama Magnifico that way, but after that, I was like, he I felt, he, he was starting to feel really isolated. Yeah. And we, we actually love being all up in each other's business while we're painting, exactly. you know, and, or, or when he's, he'll, so I'll be working <laughs> on a painting. Sophia will be, you know, building something in the corner and James will be writing a song and I'll be asking him, you know, does this look, what do you think about this color? Or should I put this tree here? Should I put this happy little tree here or should I not? You know, and uh, I wait for you to ask. But, <laughs> so then, so I'm always so open and I ask him, you know, do you like this? What do you think? Do you like this? And then, but when he's painting, I think he wants the same kind of attention. <laughs> and so I'll go up and say, you're going to fix her eye, right? And he'll look at me like, uh, I'm not there yet. <laughs> I'm not ready yet. <laughs> but I tell you, I, when I'm ready for, to get her opinion, I need it really bad because she offers in, invaluable opinions on my art now. I, I couldn't finish a painting without her, actually. Yeah. So now I'm, I've learned, you know, 10 years in the marriage. So I'll creep up and go, I'll, oh, how's it going? And, and I'll say, and he'll say, oh, I, I'm almost ready to ask you what you think. <laughs> go away for five more minutes. <laughs> I just want you to enjoy it right now. <laughs> no, it's fun. It's like wide open, living, working space. Yeah, it's wow. good. It's like a our own little artist colony here. Nah. <laughs> yeah, that that it does sound like that. You were talking about um, my students are really funny when um, when they're painting and stuff because they'll hear me put down my palette knife and they're like, and you <laughs> just see it. It's all of a sudden they start getting tense. It's like, oh no, here she comes. She's gonna come over <laughs> and talk to me. I know she's gonna come over and talk to me. <laughs> and it's like I'm not that mean. I mean, that's what I keep saying. I said, you guys. Am I saying things wrong? I mean, because you know, yeah. I could be pretty direct, and and I'm like, am I saying things wrong? Because I don't want to discourage you. I want to have a conversation yeah. with you, you know, and and we want to be positive, and you know, and all yeah. this. And, and then it was just like, one time we were sitting there, and I said, like, okay, I would walk up and I just circle my like an area on the thing. I said, you need to fix this, and that's all, <laughs> that's all I say is you need to fix this. And they look, and I'm waiting for them to ask me questions, you know, because right. It's like, I told you what I told you there's something wrong. I want you to ask me questions. They start asking me questions, but it was really funny because 
they've all now known each other for some of my regular students have known each other for a good year or whatever. And the next thing I know is, Hey, do you see the guy winking at me up there? And then I'm like, Oh my God, here we go. And it just, <laughs> like, it just went and just, and it, it was all done and, and they were laughing and having fun with it. And the, the person didn't get upset about it. And I was just like, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, don't get that way. Because you know? so, I'm worried about people just being way too negative and hurting somebody's feelings. And then they, yeah, they go away, yeah. you know, it, it's, yeah. but it was funny because it was like, and then they came over and I was like, okay, yeah, I see the person in mine, you know, that lie that's sticking up there in the middle of the, the tree. I'll get rid of it. You know? so, yeah. It's the whole thing. It, it, teachers i mean i've taught a little too do you border on do you be the one who's pulling the weeds or do you encourage the grass to grow you know yeah or yeah is it it's a combination it's funny at the beginning of the year my students they go am i done can i be done can i be done <laughs> and i hate that question and yeah. so inevitable always without fail i will say well no because you can fix this this and this <laughs> and so that now i have this reputation Miss Van is never satisfied. You can never be good enough for her. But what it does is it pushes them to try to answer all those things before mm. they know I'm going to find them. And so now they know I've seasoned them. <laughs> they come up to me and say, what else can I do? Well, there you go. Yeah. Not, not can I be done? Yeah. <laughs> they ask me that and I come back, oh, I don't know. Are you done? Yeah. <laughs> and they just look at me and go, oh, stop it. And I'm like, no, are you done? Stand yeah. back here. Go. Uh, our favorite saying is, "We live down towards Cincinnati in Ohio, and Cleveland is way up on the other side of the on uh, the northern side of the state." Okay, so about four and a half hours away from from Cincinnati. Right. So I would they whenever you go, "Am I done? Go stand in Cleveland and tell me what you see." <laughs> tell me if it's done because they never walk away from their canvas. It's a constant right, right up oh, against. God. You know, it's oh, like go God. stand in Cleveland and tell me. So they go all the way to the back of the room and they stand there and look at it. And I go, "What do you see?" And they go, "Well, my eye went right to uh huh. <laughs> yeah, go fix it." So, yeah, <laughs> you know. And also, I don't know if this is good. This is like catering to technology. But what James and I have found out is when we go to when we think we're done and we go to photograph <laughs> the piece for our websites. It's amazing what you spot in the photograph. Oh yeah. Of, and you go, oh gosh, how can I not yeah. see that right in front of me? And especially knowing 9% of the viewers of the painting will see it on a, as a little thumbnail on their screen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. so it really helps to snap a picture of it and, and see if anything jumps out at you. Yeah, and you know, I think that helps more than, I was always, I was always taught, you know, turn it upside down, turn it on its side. But all I do is, yeah. as I try to stand on my head and look at it or turn my head to the side <laughs> and look at it, it doesn't help as much as if I do take a picture of it. And I think that That's comes, right. and I think that comes mm -hmm. from our, our, you know, I, my work life in Procter and Gamble, I was on a computer all day. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm used to catching mistakes on a computer screen. I'm not used on to catching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, one of the techniques Duffy taught uh, as a portrait painter, which a lot of people teach, is you look at, well, as you're working, you look at the mirror and it flips it and you get a new approach to it. Um, right. I uh, I did that for one of my first, you know, five or six years. For some reason, I stopped doing it um, only because because of this process of taking it. <laughs> It's so easy now to snap a picture and look at that. You know that'll yeah. wash your mind of you know how yeah. you're used to seeing it too. Yeah. yeah. And you know, one of the things that I do is I'll take a picture of the color. Like I'll have my my husband actually is the photographer, so he'll take mm -hmm. a picture of the painting when I'm done, and then send it over to me. And then I'll take that and turn it back into a black and white so that I can compare my original yeah. value study to where I ended up with my colors. It's and good, yeah. see how strong it is. So it's another real helpful um, tip if folks are looking for. Yeah. yeah. That, I mean, all, all other uh, mediums are that way. Songwriter, it, it's not done when, right when they're done. They let someone hear it, you know, then they hear it back, and then in a week it'll change. And you should not, don't be done with it <laughs> until, until yeah. you start messing it up. And then, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, how many times have we heard, oh, I shouldn't have done that? <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have done yeah, that. Yeah, that's when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> well, right after you fix what you just did. Yeah, you're yeah. done. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> exactly, yeah.
<laughs> well, I said, it's been great talking with you guys. Um, we're oh, yeah, likewise. Great. Yeah. So um, anything Let's else you want to add? Yeah, yeah, we could do that for sure. Is there anything yeah. else? <laughs> no, no, I don't know. I could talk for three hours about the big painting. Yeah. Oh, I and mean, he. It, speaking of music and art, um, the oh, big yeah. painting, Drama Magnifico, mm -hmm. is on YouTube with the original music score, um, and it kind of dives through the narrative of the really complex and dramatic narrative of this painting. Mm -hmm. And so it's only a five-minute video, um, but it's James' original musical score and a deeper look into the painting. Yeah. And do you want to give the, is it under James's YouTube channel or? Yeah, it's under my channel. So J James Van Fossen, and then the painting is called Drama Magnifico. Okay, and then there was one more that I didn't get shown of James's work, so we'll put that up there. So the ballerina. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's Magnum Opus. Yeah. That's the one that, we when we sold that, it gave me the encouragement to do the, big, the bigger one after it. Oh, okay. and a lot of people like <laughs> <laughs> this one only took I think four months. This one actually mm -hmm. hangs in the corporate offices of Jerry's Artorama. Yeah. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I know them too. He, they've got two of my paintings. I didn't and it was really oh, funny. Yeah, yeah the, it was an interesting mm -hmm. experience. I was painting with Michael Harding, who I'm sure you guys know too. Um, oh, yeah. oh yeah. yeah. Love his colors. Yeah, yeah, I love his paints too. So um we were I there was their first year at Jerry's uh, Art of the Carolinas. And uh -huh. I happened to be down visiting my mother-in-law who was living down there at the time. And I said, well, I can come over and demo in your booth if you want. And he said, okay, cool. So I was demoing and then David came up and said, okay, I want you to paint this, but I don't want you to paint it in these colors. I want you to go pick a palette out of Michael's paints. And he went he went off and grabbed a, um, in a uh, canvas. <laughs> Couldn't think what it was for a minute, and put it on the and put it on my easel. And he says, "I want you to paint it this big." And you know, so he and he disappeared. And I walked <laughs> over and I said, "I said David likes really like kind of like wild stuff, right?" <laughs> so Mike was like, "Yeah, don't hold back." So I grabbed these <laughs> colors that Michael looked at me and said, "Oh my God, I don't know how you're going to make this work." And I like looked at him like, "You don't know how I'm going to make this work. I don't know how I'm going to make this work." <laughs> so I like squirted this stuff out and I started painting it. And the next thing I know, Michael came up behind me and he says, "Don't look now," but he's grabbing everyone that's down here, instructing and talking about what you're doing. And I was oh, like, "Oh my gosh!" How and cool. I looked. I mean, my mouth dropped open. I looked at it and this fear. <laughs> Michael could see the fear <laughs> in my eyes, and he goes, "No, no, it's a good thing. It's a good thing." He started saying, and I was like. <laughs> Oh my God! You know, so I painted this. This it was a um, water mill up in um, St. Andrews by the Sea, and or a pulp mill or something. It was some kind of mill, and with trees all around it and all this. So it was, and I, it was it was something I probably have never painted like that again. But David walked up to me afterwards and he said, "That's mine." And I said, "Oh, very <laughs> okay. good." And I, I said, "Okay, you know." So, so he got yeah. it. And then he came back and told me later. He says, "I'm going to hang this in my bathroom." And I was like, "Should I be insulted?" <laughs> the bathroom? He, yeah, he said he's going to hang it in the bathroom. And and thankfully, Michael and Karen were over at David's house. And he looked at me and she said, "You would not believe this bathroom." She goes, it's the size oh, of everybody right. else's room, okay? <laughs> so yeah, he was like, it's yeah. the size of a dining room, and it's really a bathroom, <laughs> and it's just, you know. <laughs> and I'm like. Yeah, I'm hanging in some bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I was like, okay, I guess I shouldn't be insulted. And he's like, no, no. <laughs> so, that's well, funny. It's a good thing, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a huge compliment. He's the best. He's, like, yeah, such he's, a major supporter him. of. Yeah. The whole time I painted right. Drama Magnifico, I was in conversation with him, and he was encouraging me so much to continue on with the painting. Cool. He's yeah. the one that started that he gave me the show in Manhattan for the opening for that painting. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, they are yeah. they are really great supporters of of art. Yeah, and, yeah. 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 I love um, them. Yeah. So okay, well, great. So I think um, we're gonna wrap it up. I really enjoyed talking with both of you. We'll need to do this again. Um, Yes. Yeah, anytime. <laughs> yeah. So Leanne, when you get the second book made, <laughs> we'll do an art chat on, on writing. So. <laughs> you should Facebook me and push me. <laughs> well, I will. Have, 
we'll definitely nudge. Facebook. Yeah, we'll definitely Facebook you. So no, no worries. Um, yeah. So thanks again. Again, this is James and Leanne Van Fossen, and both of them are on Facebook. Uh, you have websites. Tell us your websites. Uh, mine is. Uh, www.lavfineart.com. Mine's like, yeah, World Wide Web. <laughs> <laughs> uh, JamesManFossen.com. Well, that was real hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then um, this will be uh, coming soon out, uh, out on Buzzsprout. It'll be on iTunes. It'll be on Spotify. Right. It'll be on YouTube. Um, it'll be on my Patreon page, which is... Um, Patreon.com slash Linda Fissler, Linda Riesenberg Fissler. Sorry, don't even know my own name anymore. <laughs> and um, so, yeah. yeah, thanks for thanks for joining us. Hope you guys had as much fun listening as we had talking, because <laughs> we had a really good time. Yeah. In this. Um, and We're sorry if you did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, breathe, James. <laughs> it's over now. <laughs> so. It's my fault. It's my fault. Thank you, Linda. Thank, Thank you, guys. Take care, everybody. Catch you next time. Bye.